and I think if I remember right, it was the 16th of December that we left uh, Stolberg for the balls, and it took us a couple of days to get to uh, the, the balls and get in behind the German lines. And it, at that time, it turned very cold. And on the way there, on the 20th of December, we were on a blacktop road, and it had gotten icy, and we were stopped for a bathroom call, and our tank went sliding and went over and rolled over the bank and went down and landed against the tree. So we were held up there overnight, and the rest of the column moved on, and they went into Liège, Belgium. And from Liège, we went on into the bulge itself, and where they, we began fighting with the Germans. And uh, I know I was on a couple of details. We got into timber area in Pine, where we couldn't use the tanks for fighting. We had to be like infantry. And they used us for picking up the dead and the frozen bodies. And I can remember a lot of them were sitting just like they were sitting behind trees. That's the way they were froze, stiff. And we had to throw them up into these six by sixes. It was cold. It wasn't as cold as. I've seen in Minnesota, but it was 10, 12 below, which is cold over there. And when you don't have a place to get into and you're outside all the time, it becomes awful cold. And a lot of the prisoners and, and uh, people that were wounded, you know, they couldn't, couldn't get at them because there was, we were down in these valleys and logging <coughs> trails. And uh, regular ambulance couldn't get down there and turn around to pick up the wounded. Do you have any memorable war stories that he does? Well, I can tell you how we, I was in a light tank, and a light tank had a different job to do than a medium or a heavy tank. And a lot of times when we took these small villages, we'd stay out two, three hundred yards from the village and throw in smoke shells in between the first buildings and houses so that the infantry could get in there without being hit or seen. And that was one of our jobs. And then we took care of a lot of the uh, German supply trucks and their, their kitchen wagons and things like that, which was lighter and was actually made for light tank duty. So we took care of a lot of that on the roads. And uh, got a lot of, of uh, supplies, uh, convoys of the Germans. And a lot of the German uh, convoys was drawn by horses. The ammunition wagons were horses. The kitchen uh, buggies, they had a big, great big pot on the back. And they had two big wheels and two small wheels. And it was pulled by two small horses. And uh, so that was, all this stuff was easy for our light tanks. And uh, we did a lot of that. And uh, we took care and, and uh, a lot of times we had to haul in extra gasoline and a lot of times they'd use a light tank on the front and the back of a column going after extra supply of gasoline when we'd run short. Um, can you explain what happened through after the breakthrough and to the uh, Elbe River? Well, when we really got rolling, we took Cologne, which is a big city, and uh, we took Cologne and uh, we were there for about a week before we moved out of Cologne. And we went from there to Paderborn, which was west of, of Cologne. And from there, we turned to our right and headed for uh, Dessau, Germany. And that's on the Elbe River. And that's where we met the Russians. Some of them were already on the other side of the river at Dessau, on the Elbe River. But a lot of them were still fighting back in Berlin. And it, I think they lost 100,000 men taking Berlin, the Russians. So Eisenhower did a good move there when he says, Americans, you don't go across the river. You stay at Dessau and let the Russians take Berlin. But we had originally been scheduled to take Berlin. What were the Russians like? What were they like? Well, they were, they were happy when we saw them because they were knew that they were probably get something to drink and that when they got to see the Americans. And uh, I, I saw these people coming across these broken bomb bridges. So 
from across the Elbe River, and it was Russian soldiers and uh, Russian women and uh, prisoners, doctors, little of everything was coming across these broken bridges. It was a big, uh, well, they were dancing and everything else, these Russians, when they got on our side. And a lot of them were, I think, pretty well oiled up. <laughs> and then they were exchanging wristwatches and buying stuff and trading. And they had plenty of stuff to drink. And uh, I know I helped uh, in uh, these last couple towns picking up uh, German soldiers in the trenches and loading them in these little wooden coffins. And the, the uh, railroad station down there, they was filled with these wooden coffins, piled as high as you can see. And they'd come down to the civilians and pull away down there in these little wagons. It was like a lumber wagon, only or mi little miniatures. And they'd load them on there, you know, and then they'd pull them up alongside the trench. Then we'd help them out of there and put them in these coffins. So we did that for a couple of days before when the fighting actually stopped. So we did a lot of helping the civilians gathering up the dead ones and and because uh, it was pretty warm weather, you know, and we couldn't be laying around too long. And I don't know where where they took all these players. I never did see where they buried them, but they sure hauled them out of there. What was it like leaving Germany and finally coming home? Well, if I remember correctly, the last day that we were actually fighting was April 25th. And uh, the war ended the first part of May. And then all of us high pointers, and I was one of the high pointers, we got to call that we would be relieved and replaced by some of the 6th Armored Division men. So. Actually, I was sent back into Germany, and we spent a few weeks in some of these villages just running patrols around. I think we covered five small villages with our tanks. And once a week, we'd patrol through these areas to let the Germans know that they were still under American authorities looking over their country, and that they couldn't try to do anything you know, to interfere with that. <coughs> 